Good afternoon and welcome to lecture 25 of ETC 779. Just before this lecture, we were discussing about the basics of accounting in which we defined what is meant by accounting, what are the assumptions of accounting and then what are the different stop, uh, different steps that the accountants follow in preparing the accounting statements. We discussed briefly how to prepare the balance sheet with the help of a small example. Now you must have noticed that that particular exercise was carried out in an informal manner. That is just to reinforce your understanding of assets and liabilities. In fact, you will be surprised that this is not the process, this is not the exact way in which accountants approach their task. That is why we are calling them as an informal process. That is to explain you the basics because you will appreciate that if the moment the number of transactions exceed this particular way of preparing the accounts would be quite difficult. But nevertheless, this is one of the way in which we will try to understand our, we will try to clear our basics, we will try to understand the basic concepts of accounting. And so, I will just like to do one more exercise. In the previous exercise, you must have noticed that all the transactions were cash transactions. However, in real life, you do not always deal with cash. So, that particular thing, non cash transactions, we want to incorporate, incorporate in our exercise. So, we will continue with Mr. David. And just to help you know some of the things about Mr. David, on July 10th, David got married to his schoolmate. Rest of the July, David was holidaying because he had earned quite a bit of money. So, he got married, got hold of her, uh, his schoolmate and then rest of the July, he was free of all these tensions. But when he came back from holidaying, he started another company. Now, he got quite a bit of confidence from his previous venture because it, he could earn some profit out of it. So, on August 1st, David put in rupees 50,000 cash as capital and persuaded his wife to give an interest free cash loan of rupees 75,000. So, this is one transaction, right, in which Mr. David has brought in rupees 50,000 and got rupees 75,000 from his wife. Now, given this transaction, I would like to draw the balance sheet as on August 1st. How my balance sheet is going to look like? What would be on asset side? and what would be on my liability side. On asset side, if you look, the cash has increased from 0 to 125,000. 50,000 has been contributed by Mr. David alone himself and 75,000 his wife contributed. So, the total cash asset is 125,000. What are the liabilities? Liability is the capital which has been provided by Mr. David and the loan that his wife had provided. So, what you find here is that capital has increased from 0 to 50,000. Similarly, loan has increased from 0 to 75,000. So, the total of asset is 125,000. And similarly, the total of liability is also 125,000. 
So, if you look at the balance sheet as of August 1st, you find that assets and liabilities they match. Now, we move on to next transaction. On August 3rd, Mr. and Mrs. David Company bought office furniture for rupees 10,000 paying cash. So, the company has now purchased cash, uh, purchased furniture that too in paying cash. So, what will be the change in asset side? The cash has come down from 125,000 and it has now become 115,000 because 10,000 is going towards purchase of furniture. Now, in asset side itself, you will find that furniture has been added from initial balance of 0, now it has increased to 10,000. So, what do you find? The total asset column is still 125,000, but its composition has been changed. Cash has come down, furniture asset has gone up. Liability, you find there is no change. And still we have got the sum of assets equal to sum of liabilities. And this is the position of balance sheet as on August 3rd. Now, let us move on to next transaction. On August 10th, David bought rupees 50,000 worth of bricks on credit, agreeing to pay the seller in two weeks time. Now, this is what is non-cash transaction. The company has bought bricks for rupees 50,000, but it has not paid the cash. Now, how it will change our asset composition as well as liability composition? Will there be any change in cash? No. Will there be any change in furniture? No. But stock under asset side will go up from 0 to 50,000 because you have bought the stock of brick. Earlier it was 0, now it will be 50,000. What will happen to the liability? Let us see. Assets, you find cash, there is, okay, this was the previous one. Furniture, you find it is 10,000, no change. Stock, you find that it has increased from 0 to 50,000. So, the total of assets you find it is 175,000. Now, what is happening to liability? There is a further addition in liability in the form of creditors. That means, the company owes 50,000 to the supplier of brick and that is why your liability has also gone up. Now, here again you find that the total asset is equal to total liability. So, just try to see what the company owns and what the company owes. In this particular example, in this particular transaction, the company has bought bricks worth rupees 50,000 and it has not paid. So, it is on credit. So, that means you owe, that means the company owes the supplier of bricks rupees 50,000. So, it is an added liability as far as the company is concerned. So, that is why I have kept creditors under liability column. Now, we move on to next transaction. You can note it down. David's luck is still held. Brick prices went up sharply since government banned the brick kiln in New Delhi. David sold his entire stock on August 15th 
for rupees 60,000. The buyer promised to pay in a week. So, you find David is quite lucky. The government banned the brick kiln, which was producing the bricks. And so, naturally, the prices went up. And taking advantage of this situation, David sold out all his brick stock for rupees 60,000, but not in cash this time. The buyer has agreed to pay the company in a week's time. So, here again the sale is on credit, not on cash. So, this again is an example of non-cash transaction. You can understand the difference. In the previous exercise, all the transactions that we were finding were all involving cash. Whereas, in this example, we have got some cash transactions as well as some non-cash transactions. Now, how this is going to affect our balance sheet? This is what we would like to see. So, if you look at the balance sheet as on August 15th, the cash is still at 115,000, no change in cash. Furniture, there is no change. Stock, there would be change because from the initial balance of 50,000, the closing balance would be 0 because the entire stock has been sold out. So, from my 50,000 stock, I have come to a stock situation of 0, stock position of 0. So, there is a change in stock. Now, you will find there is another row which shows debtors. Now, these debtors which is ha uh, which happens to be the buyer in this case, the company owns this much money, 60,000, because this is the sale amount. The brick has been sold for rupees 60,000. So, that is why you find that it has been shown under asset side and the total debtors amount has increased from 0 to 60,000. So, what you find the total assets is coming to be 185,000. Now, if you look at the liabilities, capital there is no change, the value is still 50,000, loan there is no change 75,000, creditors there is no change 50,000. There is one more row called retained earnings. This is nothing but the profit that you have made out of the sale proceedings. You bought the stock for 50,000 and you sold it at 60,000. So, how much money you have made out of this transaction? Rupees 10,000. And since the capital you owe or the company owes, the profit is also a liability. This point we discussed for previous problem also, because since the capital does not belong to the company, it was owed by the company, the profit also belongs to the capital provider and that is why it is an added liability. That means, earlier you had to manage a small sum of money, now you are also accountable for this much extra that you have made out of the profit. So, this is also to be treated as a liability. So, the total liability also turns out to be 185,000. Now, with the help of this small example, you may also notice one thing. What is that? You will find that 
neither the company has paid the supplier nor the company has received the money from the buyer. But still we are recognizing that we have made a profit of this much. This is what was discussed under one of the assumptions that whenever any transaction ta takes place, we recognize it, we do not wait when exactly we are going to be paid or when exactly we are paying. This was one of the assumptions. The moment these transactions are occurring, we realize, we recognize instead of waiting for the actual time at which we receive or we pay the money. So, this point has been clearly explained in this particular example. Neither the company has paid to the supplier who has supplied the bricks for 50,000 nor the company has paid to the buyer, uh, sorry, nor the company has received from the buyer. In other words, neither the company has paid 50,000 nor the company has received 60,000 as of today as of August 15, but still we have shown it under retained earnings and under debtors. And like previous balance sheet, this also is matching. The sum of total assets is 185,000 and the sum of total liabilities is also 185,000. Now let us move on to next transaction. The brick purchaser turned out to be reliable and paid rupees 60,000 promptly on August 22nd. David naturally who had been quite nervous heaved a sigh of relief because first time he had been involved in non-cash transaction. He was not sure whether the buyer is going to pay him or not. So, the supplier, the buyer turned out to be reliable and the company received rupees 60,000. See, you must have been noticing in some of the transactions I am writing David, but actually we are meaning that it, the transaction is being performed by the company and we are writing the account for the company. Right, that is very, very important. It has to be made very clear in the beginning itself for whom we are writing the accounts. In this case, all our accounts are being maintained for Mr. and Mrs. David company. So, this point you please understand very carefully. So, how is this transaction going to affect our balance sheet? that we would like to see. What will happen? You have received a, received the money, rupees 60,000. So, earlier we had 115,000. Now, it will go up to 175,000 because 60,000 we have received, the company has received. Furniture is still at 10,000, stock at 0, debtors now you can see it has also come down to 0. 60,000 was my original balance, opening balance. Now it has been paid. So, there is no asset as far as debtors are concerned. And you find that the total asset is still 185,000. Now there is no change in liabilities. clear? Now, let us move on to next transaction. David under pressure to keep his word now that his debtor had done so, paid the amount due to the brick supplier on August 23rd. Now that he has received the money from his purchaser, he also wants to keep up his promise 
and so he paid his supplier rupees 50,000. So how it is going to change my balance sheet? Now I will have zero creditors because I have given him rupees 50,000. So under liability, the creditor value would come down from 50,000 to zero. What will happen to asset? Cash asset will come down because 50,000 has been paid from that cash asset only. So the new look of balance sheet as of 23rd August would be something like this. Cash from 175,000, it will come down to 125,000. Furniture, no change, stock, no change, debtors, no change and total would be 135,000. Similarly, if you see the liabilities, capital no change, loan no change, creditors still at 0, retained earning still at 10,000. So although the money we have received now and we have paid now, this was taken care right at the time we entered into the transaction. That is one of the assumptions of accounting, the principle of accrual. This is what is meant by principle of accrual. Now finally, this is the last transaction entered into this uh, by this company. It says what about me? Now that you are earning a lot, how about repaying my loan? You remember, Mr. David had taken a loan of 75,000 from his wife. And David, after much thought, paid rupees 25,000. He did not repay the entire amount, thinking if I pay the entire loan, people will think that I am a sucker. That means I am easily being made fool by my wife. So just to avoid that kind of thing, he has paid only part money to him, uh, to her. How it will change the transaction, how it will change the balance sheet? Now my cash is further going to come down by another 25,000 and my liability is also going to come down because I have repaid my loan partly. So under loan from a balance of, from a balance of 75,000, it will now show 50,000 only. So if you just look at this balance sheet as on 31st August, cash has come down from 125,000 to 100,000. Furniture, no change. Stock, no change. Debtors, no change. Total assets at 110,000. Liabilities, if you see. Capital, no change. Loan. Yes, there is a change from 75,000, it is coming down to 50,000. Creditors, no change, retained earning 10,000. What do you see? The total assets is coming to be 110,000 and total liability also is 110,000. So this is the status of balance sheet as on August 31st. Now with these set of transactions which we started from August 1st to August 31st, if we want to make the balance uh, profit and loss account, how will it look like? In profit and loss account, you show what are your sales? You had a sales of rupees 60,000. How much was your expense? The only expense that you made was towards purchase of material, 50,000. So how much is the profit that you made during 1st August to 31st August? It is equivalent to rupees 10,000. 
Now, this is one of the very, very informal manner of preparing the accounts. This is just to explain you the inside of it, but this is not the way in which accountants approach their problem, because you will realize that a construction company enters into hundreds of transactions on a daily basis. Now, if the accountants start making the balance sheet after every transaction, their life would be quite difficult. But through these two illustrations, we have been able to understand how balance sheet gets changed after each transaction. These exercises have able to have been able to make us understand what are assets, what are liabilities and how they balance each other. Now, what I will do is, we will move to a different topic and in next lecture, I will try to bring out one example and then try to solve it through a formal accounting process. Whenever you talk to accountants, you will always come across debit, credit, this, that, T account, ledger, journal. So, such things are always told. So, we will do one or two exercises following the manner in which accountants approach it. That we will be doing it in next lecture. In today's lecture, we are going to see one more topic which perhaps makes construction accounting different than other sorts of accounting. So, the topic for the discussion which we are going to have right now is construction contract revenue recognition. Here we are trying to find at what point of time we say that fine, we have made some money, this is the revenue that has been generated. There are different methods and depending on what type of accounting policy your country follows, you have to find out which process to adopt. Now, this is a problem area because as in the beginning we said that construction contract are existing for a long duration, one year, two years, three years. So, at what point of time you say that okay, this is the revenue that you have made, this is the profit that you have made or maybe this is the loss that you have incurred. So, what are the different approaches? That is what we want to discuss. So, increased duration is one aspect and then the involvement of uncertainties is another aspect and construction project has both these peculiar features. Not only the durations are long, but the project is full of uncertainties. Material prices may go up, there could be labor strike, so you could be running into uh, loss of I mean labor forces, then even if you are able to mobilize labor forces, they may be charging you more, so labor, pays, uh, labor wages may increase. So, keeping all these things in mind, there are different ways through which the revenue is recognized and accordingly profit and losses are calculated. So, let us see what are the different ways. We are going to discuss four methods. First is known as cash method of revenue recognition, a straight accrual method of revenue recognition, completed contract method and percentage of completion method of revenue recognition. 
these four categories of methods which are used for recognizing the revenue in a construction contract we are going to discuss one by one. So, let us start with cash method of revenue recognition. What does we have in this particular method? In this method, okay, what we do is we take up one small example and then we try to find out what happens with both these four methods, with all the four methods. For this, I assume that the contract amount is $1,000. Original estimated cost is 900000 Bill to date is $700,000. Payments received to date is $630,000. Costs incurred to date is $450,000. Forecasted costs to complete $400,000. And costs paid to date is $400,000. See what happens if you take any construction project you will have a given contract value. Then you will find that there is a or estimated cost to complete that project as far as the contractor is concerned. And then every month you are going to bill and so at any point of time you can have a exact value of billed to date. So, corresponding to some project, these data are given to us. Now, we will try to apply all the four methods for this particular example and then see in which method what is the revenue that is considered. Now, as an assignment, you please try to see which method is being followed at your place which accounting standard you follow, whether it is a cash method, whether it is a completed contract method, whether it is a percentage completed method, these things you have to check and then accordingly use them. But just to understand the principle, what happens in each of these cases, we have taken this small example. So, I will just repeat this uh, data for you. Contract amount $1,000, original estimated cost $900,000, billed to date. That means this much money you have been able to raise the bill, $700,000. Payments received to date, that means clients have paid you $630,000 at this point of time and you have incurred a cost to this date 450000 and the forecasted cost to complete the remaining work is 400000 and cost that has been paid to date is 400000 now for any project you work out these values these parameters at regular interval and you try to see how much money you have made, whether you are running into profit or whether you are going to incur loss. In some other course, I will tell you how to calculate these values. When we take up the other course on project planning, there actually I will tell you how to take care of such parameters. What are the inputs that you need to gather? in order to arrive at these values. For the time being, just take this on face value and proceed with the revenue recognition methods. Now, what happens in cash method of revenue recognition? 
the revenue for the project at any point of time is calculated by payment received to date minus costs paid to date. So, how much payment you have received till date and how much cost has been cleared to date that means how much money you have paid to your supplier, to your workers. So, that is the total cost part. Total cost will have material cost component, labor cost component, equipment cost component, your overheads, your plant and equipment, your subcontractors cost. So, to them how much money you have actually paid and from the client how much money you have actually received. These two are very, very important as far as cash method of revenue recognition is concerned. That is why you find the name cash is written here. So, you say okay, revenue for this particular project at this point of time is the payment received minus the costs paid. Now, if you look the that look at the data provided for this particular example. The payment has been received to date how much? 630,000. That much money already we have received. And how much costs have been paid to date? It is 400,000. So, as far as this particular method is concerned, revenue to date is 230,000. So, it is very, very clear in this sense that we are giving too much importance to cash. How much money we have received and how much money we have paid? These two are the most important parameter in this particular method of revenue recognition. So, for the given data, you find that the revenue to date is 230,000. Now, we move on to next method which is called straight accrual method of revenue recognition. Now, if you look at the name, uh, nomenclature, it says straight accrual method. So, here we are not concerned about the cash part. So, in this particular type of revenue recognition, we give emphasis to build to date. That means, how much bill we have already given to the client and how much cost I have incurred to date. So, these two are taking priority in this particular method of revenue recognition. How much has been billed to date? and how much cost has been incurred to date. So, these two figures for this particular example happens to be 700,000 and 450,000 respectively. So, if you try to use this formula or this method, you will find that the revenue to date is 700,000 minus 450,000 which is equivalent to 250,000. Whereas, in case of cash method of revenue recognition, we had revenue totaling to 230,000 only. Now, we move on to the third method which is completed contract method of revenue recognition. Now, in this particular method, the revenue is recognized only when the project gets completed. That means, as long as your project is running, you say that you are not in a position to know how much profit has been made, how much sales have been made or how much losses have been made have been incurred. 
So, in the context of this particular example, since the project is not yet complete, since the project is not yet complete, the revenue would be 0 as far as the particular date is concerned. So, the revenue to date would be equal to 0 in this case. So, naturally for long term duration project, this method is not at all suitable. Suppose the project is running for 3 years and every year, every year for first 2 years you will be showing 0 revenue and suddenly at the end of year 3 when your project is completed you will show okay revenue is this profit is this or loss is this so this particular this particular method obviously has got disadvantage another disadvantage disadvantage for this is we won't be in a position to take any corrective measures because you won't be able to do anything suppose you found that the project is making losses this you realize only when the project gets completed we will not be able to do anything about that because we would have been able to take corrective action only when the project would have been in running situation So, that is why these particular type, this particular type of revenue recognition is used only for very short duration project. Because in long duration project, if you try to apply this, uh, as a manager, your role, uh, you will not be that effective because it is not possible to take corrective actions. So, this is one of the disadvantage for this particular type of revenue recognition method. Now, we finally move on to the last type which is known as percentage of completion method of revenue recognition. Now, this is most commonly used method of revenue recognition and it is widely used across different countries first three methods are not that popular whereas this particular method is most widely used now revenue under this particular method is computed in two steps in step 1 we find out what is the percentage progress how much percentage of the project has been completed whether it is 50 percent, whether it is 55 percent, whether it is 60 percent. So, step 1 is to calculate the percentage completion and for that we use this particular expression cost to date divided by cost to date plus cost to complete. What is cost to date? cost to date is that value of cost which you have been able to incur to that particular date and cost to complete is your forecast. How much do you think your remaining activities are going to cost you? That is the cost to complete. So, in terms of cost, we are able to calculate the percentage progress. So, in this particular example, you find that cost to date is 450,000 and cost to complete which is the forecast is 400,000. So, for this particular example, we find that project has been completed to 52.94 percent extent. So, this is as far as step 1 is concerned. What we have done? 
we have simply calculated what is the cost to date that I have incurred and I also find out what is the predicted cost or estimated cost to complete the balance project. So, in terms of these two, I calculate the percentage completion value. Now, in step 2, what I do? I straight away multiply this percentage completion value to my total contract value. Contract value is that at which the contractor has been awarded the project. So, in this particular example, contract value was $1,000. So, that I multiply it with 52.94%. That means, revenue to date for this particular example project is coming to be 529,400. That means, 529,400. Uh, it is clearly shown in the slide. If you look at the slide, revenue is calculated by multiplying contract price with the percentage completion obtained in the first step. So, revenue to date we have been able to identify using all the four methods. In first method, we got a value of 230,000. In second method, which was a straight accrual method, we got it 250,000. In third method, which is the contract completion method, we got a revenue value of 0. Whereas, the fourth method, percentage completion method, we got a value of 529,400. Now, once you have got the revenue to date, you can calculate what is the gross profit to date. Revenue is nothing but you can equate it to sales that okay, you have been able to sell this much amount. Now, you are interested in finding how much is my gross profit to date. That you calculate it by revenue recognized minus cost incurred to date. So, revenue recognized using this particular method is 529400 and cost incurred to date is 450,000. So, that means as of today date, you have made a profit of 79,400, 79,400. Whereas, in first case, if you would have tried to calculate the gross profit, you would have calculated it to be negative. Second case also negative third case also negative, but only in this you are able to find that somewhat real value close to reality and that you find it to be 79,400 rupees. So, this is how using different methods you try to calculate the revenues. Now, as I told you, construction project is full of risk. So, what accountants do is, until and unless the project is 50 percent complete, they do not record any profit. they start recording profit or reporting profit only when the project is completed by more than 50 percent. 
Here again you can, under, uh, you can realize the underlying assumption. They are conservative. That is why even up to 50 percent completion, they are not taking profit into account. They think that in future some misfortune is going to be there and so why to record the, rep uh, why to record the profit. So, it is only when the project has completed beyond 50 percent, they start reporting profit. And then there also, they hide some value, they keep some contingency margin. So, suppose the gross profit is coming to be x they will have a contingency of 5 to 7 percent. That means, they will report the profit only 0.95 x or 0.93 x. That means, they are having a cushion, they are having a contingency that in future if something goes wrong, I can always correct it and I do not run into losses because it will give a very wrong picture if profit is forecasted and the project runs into losses. So, in order to avoid it, they always keep a contingency. It may vary from 5 percent to 10 percent. Now, as in when you start approaching completion, the contingency margin starts reducing. That means, let us say at 50 percent, 55 percent, the accountant has kept a contingency margin of 7 percent or let us say 10 percent. Now, let us say after some point of time, the project is completed by 75 percent. So, the 7 percent contingency margin would be brought down to maybe 3 percent or maybe 4 percent. So, if the profit is x, they will report 0.97 x or maybe 0.96 x now as compared to 0.93 x or some similar kind of value reported when the project was 55 percent complete. So, this is how they go on reducing the contingency margin as and when project approaches towards completion. This is because the principle of conservatism, which says report the profit only when you are absolutely certain, while report the losses even if you have the slightest of chances to make it. Now, what I will do? I will just give you some exercise. You can try to do it in an informal manner, which we did it today. And then in the next class, when we reassemble, we will try to work those problems in the manner a real accountant would do. So, for that, you can note down these transactions. In this particular transaction, on July 1st, Ramaswamy started the blue company with rupees 100,001 of his own and rupees 99,999 provided by his friends. See, in India, if you see, the odd value is always considered auspicious. So, that is why you find here 100,001, it is considered an auspicious figure. So, whenever you give someone some money to let us say some priest or some in some temple, you pay him in odd numbers. For example, 11, 121 
or 1001. So, this is one of the customs and that is what is being followed by Mr. Ramaswamy when he has started the company with rupees 100,001 of his own and 99,999 provided by his friends. His banker fell on his knees and pleaded with him to honor him by taking a loan of rupees 300,000. Ramaswamy agreed and had the cash delivered. So, this is transaction 1. Now, here Mr. Ramaswamy is another creature, right? He has just retired from one government department which used to issue licenses. In this particular country, we had a system of license some time back. Now, those system have been removed, but this particular example has been drawn keeping that thing in mind. So, just to repeat this, on July 1st, Ramaswamy started the blue company with rupees 100,001 of his own and rupees 99,999 provided by his friends. His banker fell on his knees and pleaded with Ramaswamy to honor him by taking a loan of rupees 300,000. Ramaswamy agreed and had the cash delivered. Transaction 2. Before commencing manufacture, the blue company needed some fixed assets, a building, equipment and some furniture. On July 3, I will just read it out and send it, uh, send these slides to you through mail. On July 3, Ramaswamy purchased a building for rupees 50,000, the required equipment for rupees 200,000 and furniture for rupees 20,000. Then some more transactions are given. There are about 7 8 transactions. So, you follow the same principle which we did employ for the 2 problems that we solved today. And then try to understand which transaction is affecting what, whether it is affecting the asset, whether it is affecting the liability. And at every transaction, you just see whether your assets are matching the liability or not. So, at this point of time, I would like to close this lecture and I would like to answer your queries or your the doubts that you have. Otherwise, we will be closing it for the day. Yes. Uh, I am very sorry, I, I did not get time to reply to your uh, uh, query. I will send it to you within a day or two, do not worry. Okay, thank, you. thank you. There are 2 mails that thank I have received. Uh, I will try to answer them both very quickly. Any, no, any other doubt? Uh, which lecture notes? Lecture 1. Uh, okay, I will try to see what all I have sent you and then uh, the remaining I will send you. I think all uh, except uh, I think up to lecture number 18 I have sent you. Okay, lecture 20. So, I will send you for the remaining lectures also. Thank you and good night.